talk about. A middle-aged person is not easy to talk about because he doesn't know himself. He'll change from one moment to the next. Uh, we don't even know what changes a middle-aged person. I mean, it may be a mood. It may be something that happened 10 years ago or something that will happen 10 years from now when he dies. <laughs> you know? But we don't, we don't know, so it's much more difficult. Ready? Make the announcement. Girls, the happiness boys singing up on the moonbeam. Girls, the happiness boys. Up on the moonbeam. Up moon on beam. the moonbeam. Do it. Up on the moonbeam. <laughs> up on the moonbeam. Moon moon Do it. Beam. Up on the moonbeam. Up you. on the moonbeam. Hit it, boys. What makes my head go round and round? <laughs> While my heart stands still. <laughs> hey, Vince, man. Oh, hey, Benny. Hey, what's going on? Easy. Take it easy. Keep on the top of the road. We're with these girls. So, what's the story? What are you guys doing here? We just came in here. We're climbing around. Climbing around? Well, go climb around somewhere else, huh, buddy? We're with these girls. Oh, wait. Chill out, punk. Hey, wait a minute. What do you mean, take it easy? Take it easy. Take it easy. Well, take your hands off. You're gonna take somebody now. Get out of here. We're only kidding around, buddy. All right, come on. Come on. Okay, son. I'm listening for a second. What do you want to fight for? Buddy, just get your hands off. You want to tangle ass? Let's go. Let's go. I've read somewhere that you collected the money of shadows from the people in the street. Yeah, we went on a radio program, and on this radio program, we were talking about films and what should be done with films, and, and this man said, wouldn't it be wonderful if uh, people would finance films? Who said it? Uh, Gene Shepard. This man had a program called Gene Shepard's Night People. It started at 1 o'clock in the morning. <coughs> and I said, yeah, it'd be terrific. We'd make a film if people would finance us that way. We'd just get right on, and um, he said, if everyone sent in a dollar, it would be wonderful. The next day, $2,000 in dollar bills came in the mail to our studio. And uh, we were committed to start a film. And we took what was an impro improvisation, part of an improvisation, and we started to make a film. But it wasn't a film in the sense of a film. It was a film in a series of scenes. And the scenes were uh, predicated on a Negro family in New York. And the actors that we took were marvelous in that we worked for four months. And when we got through, I was an actor who had gotten behind the camera and decided to be like all people on their first film, that every, this is magic and a magic instrument, and I was gonna use it marvelously and, and shoot just impressions of what people said and impressions of what people were, rather than shooting inside the people. And I did this, and we all did it for four months. At the end of four months, I went to a theater owner friend of mine, and I said, look, uh, we want to show our film, and we can fill this theater tonight. I mean, if we just start tonight, we can fill the theater. So he gave us the theater. It was the Paris Theater in New York. And uh, 600 people filled that theater, and we turned away another 400 people at, at the door. About 15 minutes into the film, the people started to leave, and they left, and they left. And I began perspiring, and the cast was getting angry. They, we all sat closer and closer together. And pretty soon, there wasn't anyone in the theater. I think there was one critic in the theater, one critic who was a friend of ours, who, who walked over to us and said, this is the most marvelous film I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and I said, I don't want to hit you right now. <laughs> so I'm a little uptight, <laughs> not feeling too hot, and none of us are. So uh, he said, no, no, this is really a very good film. So it, it, like all failures, uh, you get a sense of humor about it, and you go out and spend the night when it's bad enough. It's, and this was so bad that uh, it couldn't be repaired. But I'm very stubborn, and uh, Nico Papadakis, who helped us make the film, was very stubborn. And I said, how much money do you have, Nico? And he said, I have $2,000. I can get it from France, and uh, maybe it'll take a week. I said, fine, sign the check. <laughs> and I raised $13,000 the next day, and we started shooting again. And we shot for 10 days. And the result of the film was the final version of, of uh, Shadows. Now, a lot of film buffs heard about the two versions of Shadows. Yeah. So they said, we want to see the 
first version, which was the great version of Shadows. <laughs> it didn't matter to them that it was an absolute disaster. So we showed that first version of Shadows, and they championed it. They thought it was great. Now, rumors spread that I had made the film for distribution, <laughs> and that because I, uh, uh, we had uh, gone back to make it more commercial. But the film was, in my opinion, always will be. The other version exists. And uh, outside of one screening that we had, the film was allowed to be shown at any time, and, and the, the version exists. But the, uh, the second version of Shadows was m much deeper, and I think the greatest scenes in it, I mean, the best scenes in the film were, were shot in the reshooting in a 10-day period, which has to tell you something, because it took us four months to shoot the other version. And uh, uh, it was quite different with, Shadow, with Faces. Faces was a, an entirely different uh, thing. This was... Now, nine years later, eight years later, uh, we had all grown a little older, a little more mature. It's not as easy to jump in as you were telling me before. You could, uh, it would be difficult to go back to the beginnings, but sometimes it's necessary for your own sanity to go back to the beginning, go back to where you started from, and find out whether you really have it or you don't have it, or whether there really is something to say or, or not. And when we started this film, none of us really had very much to say. And now, uh, here it, it took us three, over three years to make Faces. And at the end of the film, we have many things to say. So uh, it, it only shows that, uh, uh, that creativity, that solid creativity, no matter what it is, creates more things, more ideas. It doesn't dissipate itself in, in one. Uh, we went through that film, and, and uh, Jenna uh, was my wife, was in the film. She was pregnant during the film. And uh, it was difficult. And uh, our other leading lady was pregnant during the film, so that was difficult. And since we finished the film, uh, the, the other girl, Lynn Carlin, had two children from the day that we finished the film until the completion of the editing of the film. <laughs> <laughs> and many things happened on that film. For instance, I wrote a first draft. And the first draft was 200 pages long, 265 pages long, and it was only halfway completed. And we filmed it. And we decided that we'd film if it would take 10 hours to film, that that's the film that we were going to make. And that was the film that we were happy with. So we filmed it and filmed it and filmed it and filmed it and shot for six months on that film. And people, it became a, a more, more than just a film, it became a way of life. It became a... Uh, uh, a feeling against the authority that, that stood in, a, in the way of, uh, of, of, um, of people expressing themselves as they wanted to express themselves. And it became a thing that we can do that in America. We can do that without money in America. We, can, we started that film with $10,000. That film has cost over well over $200,000. between times, I've, I've paid for the film by going out and making five films. I've become an actor because of that film. I, <laughs> I hadn't made a picture in six years. It's a nice place you got here. And, uh, uh... Thank you. It's 27 years old. The people have sacrificed. I, I know one man hasn't seen his wife for a year and a half. Now, 
He's still going out to California while I'm over here making money so that we can go ahead and not distribute it, not distribute the film and not take the first offer that comes by, but really do what we, what we want with the film. So if we want to give it away to universities, we will do that. If we want to uh, uh, bury the film and never let anyone see it, we can do that. In other words, it's ours. So that uh, if it plays in a festival, fine. If it doesn't play in a festival, fine. If people love it, fine. If they don't, okay, too. But what happens is that everyone that was in this film, there are over 300 people involved, can go on with the knowledge that it can be done. Not so much that the film can be a great film or a bad film or a, a mediocre film, but the film, that the idea that it, can be, that it can happen, that people can go out with nothing and through their own will and through their uh, determination make something that exists out of nothing, out of no uh, technical uh, know-how, no equipment. There wasn't one technician on the entire film. There wasn't anybody that knew how to run a camera. Walk, walked in and, and started to, to read the directions of how to reload it. Got a moviola and looked at it. Uh, did all the things in the world, and we made eight million mistakes. But it was exciting and fun. <laughs>